I'm not a fan of predictions. Predictions are hard, but sometimes we make them because we think we've seen enough data to support our ideas. And the big mistake we often make is that we can't see everything. So guess what? An individual's predictions tend to be wrong. And we're usually impressed when someone gets them right. I say this because Mike Cernovich and Scott Adams made some pretty bold predictions. Several years ago, Scott Adams tweeted that it, it would be, uh, it's very likely that, we, that you'll be dead within a year. He said Republicans will be hunted. And uh, well, it's been three years and it's not really happening. But there is a massive increase in crime. There have been some people who have been murdered, a a scary amount. And there have been many leftists we've seen reaping the rewards of their own soft on crime policies. Mike Cernovich said just the other day or last week that the regime will accuse him of a crime and use it to, uh, to justify killing him. A lot of these things seem outrageous, very outrageous. You know, I was having a conversation with someone about how China was trying to get access and was getting access to your DNA through COVID tests. And they thought it was insane. What a silly and ridiculous idea. Crazy crackpot conspiracies. And uh, uh uh-oh, that was NPR that reported that. Yeah, seriously, just Google it. I'm like, you know what? NPR, they're crazy. China's not doing that. I agree with you. NPR, fake news, right? You see, what's been going on has gotten to the point of such absurdity that many people cannot believe it is happening all around them. Which brings me to the story for which you have clicked this video. Donald Trump followers targeted by FBI as 2024 election nears. It is plain as day right now in front of your face. You, Trump voters, Trump supporters, in fact, followers. A follower doesn't mean you like the guy. Now, if you're part of Donald Trump's MAGA army, his followers, that's what they say, you're an extremist who must be tracked by the FBI. I can simplify this for you. The country is split in twain. The Democrats think you are the enemy. They are targeting you and trying to do everything in their power to destroy who you are, what you believe. There's a, a Elon Musk tweeted out the trailer for Dinesh D'Souza's new film, Police State. And uh, it, it's, it's, you know, got some dramatization in it. But I think you should check it out. It's coming out later this month. Because this is what's happening. You. You know what's funny is, I've told you guys this before, and I will say it again. In 2016, 2017, 2018, I'm starting to see these articles talking about civil war. The culture war was brooding, was getting worse, and we started seeing street violence. And I had so many conservatives say to me, it can't happen, you're nuts. Because the the, the government would never allow this. The security state would never allow this. Oh, okay. Well, here you are. This is what you get when the security state doesn't allow it. They determine which side they're on and who must die. Don't believe me? You know, I, I, like I said, they, uh, people are saying Mike Cernovich is nuts. I was in Egypt in 2013. We got out right after the second revolution. And do you know what the Egyptian military started doing? You see, they had a revolution. They ousted Mubar- uh, M- was it Mubarak. I think it might have been. Is that who it was? Oh, it's been a long time. man. It's been 10 years. And then you had another, you had a presidency, and a year later, another revolution. Well, why does this keep happening? Why is the government unstable? Because of the Muslim Brotherhood. That's right. See, the larger faction of people in Egypt were secular-ish and didn't want the rule of the Muslim Brotherhood. So when they won because they were the largest voting bloc, you got another revolution. And when that revolution happened, Muslims protested, saying, we won the election. Why are you now removing the elected president? I believe it was Morsi at the time. So the military figured it out. They said, look, we don't care. And I'm, and I'm not saying literally they qu- quoted as this. I'm saying their actions speak this in my opinion. We don't care about why it's unstable. The instability must be cleansed. So what did they do? They started executing Muslim Brotherhood. 
They started going to their protest sites and just opening fire on them because in their minds, they were like, this is it. This is how we stop the political instability. Where do we go here from here? I don't know what to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, other than Newsweek is reporting. If you are a Trump follower, the FBI is considering you an extremist. And you know, this isn't this shouldn't be shocking news. Joe Biden is ordering this. That's right. Joe Biden is ordering you to be targeted. You're targeting by the FBI. This is a story from NBC News from a week or so ago. In forceful condemnation of Trump, Biden warns that MAGA backers pose grave threat to democracy. That's you. Yeah, I know you're probably just some dude who hangs out. You got a couple kids. You fly an American flag. Your name is John. How's it going, John? And you're like, dude, all I wanted was to see wages increase. I want to see our border secure. I believe in this country. Oh, but but you oppose military expansionism. You oppose the U.S. destroying our southern border, allowing people in, paying them off with your tax dollars and sending your money to overseas. You oppose those things. Why? How did you get those silly ideas in your head? Well, as soon as you did, you became an extremist. Newsweek reports. The federal government believes that the threat of violence and major civil disturbances around the 2024 U.S. presidential election is so great that it has quietly created a new category of extremists that it seeks to track and counter Donald Trump's army of MAGA followers. That's what they call it, huh? The challenge for the FBI, the primary federal agency charged with law enforcement, is to pursue and prevent what it calls domestic terrorism without direct reference to political parties or affiliations, even though the vast majority of its current anti-government investigations are of Trump supporters, according to classified data obtained by Newsweek. You've been warned, and some of you are to blame. As we look to these stories, you may be asking yourselves, who is fault? And certainly, There are some people who are more guilty and more responsible than others. But if you're looking to who is to blame, you need only look in the mirror. It's a a quote from V for Fendetta. And I don't think it's completely fair, especially saying it to most of you who are watching this, because most of you who are watching this actually have rejected and resisted and done what you could for the most part. So this is not aimed at you. I know, uh, uh, particularly for the people who watch and listen to Timcast, it is a very active uh, group that has been working a lot of great projects. And so it is not aimed at you. When I say you need only look in the mirror, I'm referring to, of course, your average normie individual, the people who thought to themselves, I can see it getting bad, but I better just mind my own effing business. Well, you tried. You tried minding your own business and the culture war got really bad and it got crazy. And they said, this is nuts. Then Donald Trump got elected and you thought maybe Maybe I should have voted. You see, this is what happened. Nobody wanted Hillary Clinton. And so people just didn't vote. The people who wanted uh, change and were upset about what was going on voted for Trump. Many of these normies were just like, I can't stand Trump. They thought what was going on culturally and in government was Trump's fault. They were wrong. 2020 came around and these individuals thought, if I vote for Joe Biden this time, it all goes away. Finally, we can make Trump stop. But it wasn't Trump. It never was. So they stopped Trump. Trump's not the president. But what's this? Even though Trump is not the president, the insanity hasn't deterred. It's only getting crazier. That's right. If you're wondering why it's now to the point where the government is targeting half of the country as terrorists, let me say that again for you. Donald Trump's voters make up more than half the country. Don't believe me? Look at the polling. Now you can go ahead and say all the polls are wrong as a margin of error. Then fine. Then I'll say at least half. Trump's polling above Joe Biden. And so we could be looking at between 45 and 50 percent. Donald, you know, because it's like nobody actually has like 52 percent. It's like Biden has 48 to Trump's 49 because there's a margin. So that let's just say it's the political majority. They're all terrorists. Every single one to be investigated, to be targeted. How did we get to the point where the FBI has decided that they will target half the country as terrorists. And where do you think we go? Where do you think we end up when half the country are deemed terrorists? You tell me, you tell me, because everybody said I was wrong and I was crazy. Quote, 
The FBI is in an almost impossible situation, says a current FBI official who requested anonymity to discuss highly sensitive internal matters. The official said that the FBI is intent on stopping domestic terrorism and any repeat of January 6th, but not, not May 29th, not the George Floyd riots. These people are evil. And this is how you know it's partisan. The FBI is here to support the Democratic Party, the neocons, and the machine. And if you want your voice heard, like what America is supposed to be about, you're a terrorist. The Bureau must also preserve the constitutional right of all Americans to campaign, speak freely, and protest the government. By focusing on former President Trump and his MAGA supporters, the official said, the Bureau runs the risk of provoking the very anti-government activists the terrorism agencies hope to counter. So uh, let me get this straight. For a long time now, there are a lot of people in this country who are concerned that the federal government has been weaponized by Democrats to crush their political opposition. So they decide the appropriate thing to do is attempt to crush their political opposition. It sounds like the people who are upset were correct the whole time. And y'all are evil. Yeah, I mean, this is the reality. Look, there's a, there's a bunch of different ways you can view it. Perhaps these people in the intelligence agencies think they're right, think we have to preserve the United States with this war in Ukraine and fighting back against BRICS to support the petrodollar. This is the crux of our economy. We are a world power, blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't care. I don't. You do not get to arbitrarily decide what you think is right or not. It is for the will of the people to decide to their own detriment. And that's my view. If someone decides to run into a burning building, I'm like, well, you know, with, within reason, we try to stop them from doing it. But if they go in there, I mean, what do you do about it? And why do they go in? Well, some people are insane and they run into burning buildings and they get hurt. Some people are going to save their pets. And we think the life of your pet is not worth your life, dude. But to them, to them, it is. And some people are going in to save their children. And then we say, well, yeah, we understand that. For this country, there is the potential argument that you will hear that I actually I, I don't think is articulated enough. And I think the reason for it is that the average individual who is in politics is either unwilling or lacks the understanding of worldly affairs and moral philosophy to be to, to actually discuss these ideas on the left. They'll m most likely just lie to you about it. And I think the right doesn't care for the most part. But I've I've long articulated this. And it goes as such. In, 20, in 2016 or whatever, I told people, do you want the status quo? Do you want to be able to go to Starbucks and, you know, get your double espresso with extra sugar pumps and all that stuff? Do you, do you want to be able to travel the world and, and have whatever you want to have? Vote for Hillary Clinton. Or do you want to be responsible, do the hard work to make this country better, uplift your fellow Americans, and there is a potential risk? Vote for Donald Trump. The reason why I say that is the, the model of the United States in terms of the status quo, the reason why we're at war in Ukraine, and I say this as an individual with a cursory understanding based on news articles, which means I could be very wrong. The purpose of it is to maintain the petrodollar. And that's something I don't hear a lot of people talk about. The reason why we give Pakistan money for gender studies, to build confidence in the U.S. dollar. Then people in America can buy things overseas from other countries without producing anything. It artificially inflates the standard of living and the quality of life for Americans to the point where we are a country of morbidly obese, whiny babies. Personally, I don't think that's a good thing. I think we'd be better off if we had to do a little bit of hard work, if we had to roll up our sleeves and go uh, chop some wood or, or, or lay some bricks or do whatever you have to do to build and survive, to make our own food. Instead, we've become fat, lazy, and complacent. Why? Because we point guns at the rest of the world. The reason we're in Ukraine and pushing back against Russia, you'll hear it from all the neocons, is to destroy Russia. It's to weaken a geopolitical foe. My view is, why? Well, you know, they're teaming up with China. It's bad. They're going to start building and expanding and colonizing. And it's going to put the unipolar, uh, we're no longer a unipolar world, where the United States was, was in charge for a, for a while now, a couple decades. We're going to end up where, uh, in a place where China is pushing back. And then when the petrodollar crumbles, you're going to realize that the United States is a house of cards. We don't produce enough. We don't manufacture. So how do we have this luxury? We're a superpower. We are the world police. 
That is the status quo Democratic Party mission. I find it to be evil, but not completely. It's nuanced. Do we want China to take over? Do we want to be a second world nation? Do we want to be a country that is too weak to stand up to the expansion of Chinese communist BS? Hmm. The reality, however, is much more complicated than that. That There are elements within the United States government who certainly want us to be like China. And there are international interests like the World Economic Forum that absolutely want us to embrace these values. They want us to become a machine state where people are beaten down, censored, and suppressed. It's not all just that simple as, as one thing or the other. But the reality is, with the Donald Trump presidency and with these Trump supporters, you're getting a lot of people have to do work. Yeah, we'll secure our borders. Yeah, we'll bring back manufacturing. We'll bring back jobs to this country. People will work harder than they've, they've done in a long time. They'll be able to buy less imported goods. And I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I'm all for personal responsibility. Now, it's not absolute. Donald Trump is actually a madman, as they call him. And when he was in office, we did not see Russia invade Ukraine. We saw the decimation of ISIS. We saw peace agreements in the Middle East. It's entirely possible that Donald Trump actually brings about some kind of new world order. Oh, there I said it. Whinge, media matters. I'm not talking about a conspiracy theory of a proper noun new world order. I'm saying that in the the general term of a world order, Trump could bring about one where there are peace agreements and courts that handle international disputes because no new wars under Trump. But that's bad for so many corporations. And that's bad for those who believe we need to hold the biggest stick to beat down anybody who dare oppose us. And this is where we are right now. The machine state, the sword that is the intelligence agencies would seek to destroy anyone within who would oppose its mechanization, the status quo. Donald Trump just said, why don't we just get back to what America used to do? We make things. We secure our borders, do hard work. Oh no, hard work. That means pollution. Yeah. Outsourcing our pollution to China ain't doing anything for us. It's just empowering China. The neoliberal, neoconservative worldview is done. It has failed. Under its leadership, we saw the rise of the CCP. We saw the rise, the expansion of, of, of Vladimir Putin's Russia. So I'm supposed to sit back and think, y'all know what we need? Now, I'll say it again. I am but a humble chicken in the chicken coop, and I don't actually know. And neither do you, and no one does. They compartmentalize everything. It could be more serious, it could be less serious, I have no idea. But my only issue is this. You must govern with the with the uh, uh, the will of the people in mind, uh, um, what, what what's the uh, a mandate from the people? You do not simply decide the people are chickens to generate revenue and, and an economy for you to maintain the system. But I view the system as mostly lifeless. This is where we are. They're making this argument. We must tread carefully. They're only treading carefully because they're scared that they may top to topple the boat. The view I imagine of many of these individuals in, in the FBI and other intelligence agencies is we want to completely suppress and destroy populism. But you run the risk of creating more by trying to stamp it out. You run the risk of creating more anti-establishment individuals. And this is why I think they're done. I think they've lost. If the end result is Chinese expansion the seizing of Taiwan, it is no one's fault but the intelligence agencies. Because there is an argument they could make where they would actually maintain this, but they're too stupid. I, I'm sorry, that's just it. They're incompetent. They are the grandchildren of those who created and maintained the system, or the great-grandchildren, and they don't know how to maintain it themselves. Fact. That's why we're seeing this. There's no question about it. You can make arguments about what's really going on in the world. You can make arguments about how we're being targeted by foreign influence, China, Russia, etc. World Economic Forum, but the fact of the matter is that it was our grandparents and great grandparents who put together a system, whether you like it or not, that created a unipolar world under the United States. And as it goes, as the children of these uh, of these men inherited the systems, they failed to understand what was needed to create it and maintain it. And now what we have is the most pathetic, pathetic display in terms of, um, you know, state control and power. Yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm saying what you think I'm saying. We had propaganda machines for the longest time. We lived under the boot for the longest time. We believed the lies from the media for the longest time. That's right. 
a handful of news, news agencies and propaganda. And some information would get out sometimes. But for the most part, they were able to maintain and control it. We had a U.S. office of censorship during World War II. Today, the great grandchildren and the, uh, and the, great, the grandchildren and the great grandchildren who have inherited this system have no idea how to maintain it, have no idea how to act to actually communicate with the American people and be persuasive and make arguments for, for what should be. What I find truly fascinating in all of this is the likes of these leftist commentators who, for no reason and with no argument, support the war in Ukraine. And that is the most fascinating thing to me. Are there no individuals smart enough to articulate a necessity for the war in Ukraine? None? Wow. Look, if you hire a lawyer, you commit a, you're accused of a crime. And so you hire a lawyer, the best in the business. Everybody knows their name. And they say, my guy is good, you know, and, and you're bad. And so, you know, my guy shouldn't go to jail. You're going to be like, what? We got to we got to stop a, a, a person persecuting and we got to we got to support my client. You're going to be like, guy, can you articulate an argument on my behalf? as to why I'm innocent? That is to say, there are real and good arguments for why the U.S. is involved in the war in Ukraine. The only problem is these people lack the perspicacity and the capabilities to make sound and reasonable arguments to the American people, and thus the country is being fractured. And now because of their failures, they're panicking and trying to arrest, they are arresting, but they are targeting Trump supporters as extremists. Okay, civil war. And it's a failure of confidence. The grandchildren and great grandchildren, the architects of the intelligence agencies, etc., were too stupid to actually maintain the system properly. So they're going the route that so many countries have that burn your whole country to the ground. And that's why I say maybe they're not so stupid. Maybe it was intentional and their goal is just to destroy this country. Fine. My point still stands. If there are actors within the government who know what they're doing will destroy this country, then uh, the people who are supposed to maintain it failed. And that's it. The U.S. falters. Maybe our great grandparents thought to uh, uh, thought we would be a unipolar world under a United States flag. They were doing oh so much nation building. It's successful in some places. I mean, to a certain degree, Korea, you know, I, I, I think that's fair to say Korea is awesome. South Korea, not North Korea. And then they failed. The grandchildren, look at this. You get Prescott Bush, you get World War II, you get, uh, um, what was it after World War II? And they start dividing up land and all that stuff. Creation of Israel. Or I shouldn't say the creation of, but the treaties around Israel, because that's a big political argument. And now today you've get like George W. Bush. He's like, we're going to go to Iraq and Afghanistan and we're going to we're going to make countries. And they couldn't do it. It's so pathetic. Yeah, they were they were not able to maintain this machine and this system. And so what are they doing now? Burning it down, I guess. Is that their argument? It ain't going to work. What's going to happen is as they begin to target more and more Trump supporters and they go after Trump, they go after his lawyers, they go after his properties, they make more anti-establishment forces. And so the end result is they lose. This country doesn't falter. This country gets reinvigorated. and There's a rebirth, a resurgence based on constitutional values and republicanism. I'm not talking about the Republican Party. I'm talking about constitutional republicanism and the rights of individual liberties with a responsibility to your community as a whole. And thus, the more they do this, I can say I can only say this. Either they're intending to destroy the system. They're so incompetent they're destroying the system or they're secretly seeding the resurgence of this country. Right. You don't know. You don't know. It depends on which conspiracy you want to believe. But uh, uh, I, I would love to believe that the intelligence agencies are doing these things like leaking to Newsweek that they're targeting Trump supporters so that they can get more and more people to believe in country. I mean, think about it. Donald Trump, American patriots. You got a bunch of slack jawed, lazy individuals who don't care about the history of this country. Your country is going to collapse. If you want to win a war, if you want American exceptionalism and international expansion, you need people who believe America is the best, the best, the best. Only problem is the, the MAGA faction, they don't like foreign intervention. They like Trump who said no new wars. So we'll see, man. You know, we are but humble chickens in the chicken coop controlled by these intelligence agencies and these massive multinational corporations. But we try. I can only tell you the night is always darkest before the dawn. 
And for those that don't believe what comes next, I don't know what else you need to see. I don't know what else you need to be told. They're arresting Trump's lawyers. They did. They're, they, they're, they've been sanctioning Trump's lawyers for, for simply representing him, finding them to, to, you know, millions of dollars. They have now ordered the dissolution of the Trump organization. That's thousands of jobs gone overnight. People don't think about that. When the, tr- when the judge says your organization's gone, all those jobs. Right now, there's some dude who probably makes 80K a year, and he's a mid-level dude, you know, at, at a Trump, the Trump organization, managing paperwork, and he just got word, they're, they're trying to, to take your job from you. They are gutting and ripping apart this system. They are, they, they, they are using politics to destroy business, to destroy people, to lie, cheat, and steal for power. What comes next? after a nation begins arresting its political opponents. Read any history book about any country who's ever done this, and it's plainly obvious. I hope you are ready for voting in 2024 because it's not done. And the idea that because this is happening, we don't have recourse to the system is incorrect. Trump is winning. They are panicking. Don't get tricked into doing something stupid because they're losing their minds. When, when, you know, when you're in a debate and the other person starts getting frantic and losing their mind, you know what makes them go even crazier? Just smiling and saying, why are you getting so mad? And they lose it. And that's what's happening. They're starting to lose their minds because we do an I, because Trump's winning. Even Trump has said it. So what we're going to do for now, we're going to stay the course. We're going to register voters. We're going to build culture, make money, protect our families. And then after Donald Trump gets elected, I don't think it's going to be perfect but I think he'll make some changes. He'll fire some individuals. They say, it's not revenge. It's reinvigoration. It's rebirth. Call it whatever you want. I don't care. I want him to go in and fire people. And then we can start fighting from within through politics and through the legal system. And we're going to win back. Take a look at Matt Gates the other day. They are losing. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you all then.